You are listening to Where is the Music Podcast. My name is Alberto and on this program I will talk about music in all its forms. I discuss the creative part, the understanding of music, the role that music has in our culture, our shared life, our psyche, and I will do that with the help of my piano. You can find me on all major podcasting platforms and my work as composer, pianist and teacher at albertoferro.com. This podcast has no sponsor. If you like to support me, click the link to my Patreon page, available in the description. With a contribution as little as few dollars a month, you will significantly help me keep doing what I do. Now, on to this episode of Where is the Music? Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about the difference between composing and improvising. Um, As a teacher I tend to see students or musicians somewhere in one camp or another uh, very often uh, like myself uh, exactly in between those. So what are exactly those camps and what distinguishes them and why is that important for our let's say musical creative world. So let's uh, first explore the distinction between the two. Uh, We're gonna find out that they are actually more similar than we think. Because generally we think of composing being about uh, writing, while improvising is more about performing. So let's take uh, two extreme cases of each. So Stravinsky, we know he would compose at his table uh, writing while a jazz musician would uh, um, probably even not remember or be able to write down most of what he plays. Um, The truth is that in these two extreme cases both Stravinsky and the jazz player are relying on schemes and forms that however written or perhaps merely imagined are fixed. Um, The creative part in both cases is how those schemes are being played with, whether they emerge clearly or maybe more subtly, and how a musician uh, layers these uh, different schemes one on top of the other, uh, which is something that is possible uh, only through expertise and and experimentation. Perhaps it would be better to to explain all of this or to demonstrate all of this practically. So let's create something. Let's start with uh, one note. I'm gonna pick um, E. First thing that I recall is that uh, the jazz uh, artist, singer, Bobby McFerrin, uh, once I think said something to the effect of improvising is the courage to play the next note. So let's play the next note and the next. Okay, I got three notes now. Let's now return to the first note. We have created a little story, a little arc. Uh, the moment we, uh, we can just repeat it and if we repeat it enough now becomes a f- become a fixed idea it somehow starts getting starts becoming composed we can correct it and the more we correct it the higher degree of composition uh, we are uh, producing So here is the first arrival point. Improvisation is a necessary step towards composition. Written or not, uh, fixating an idea is what distinguishes composing from improvisation. So the line is not so clear anymore. Whether I write this or I don't, still, 
if I repeat it, I'm not improvising it anymore. So somehow it becomes fixed. It's an idea, it stays there. Maybe uh, we can continue uh, by adding a chord. How about, uh, let's add a chord of A. <laughs> Following McFerrin's maxim, let's uh, add uh, another chord. Another chord means something different, contrasting, and uh, if I call this chord 1, I'm gonna go to the farthest possible away, maybe 4 or 5, you will say, well, some of you might think, well, the farthest possible away is, the notes are 7, and we should go to a 7th chord, but actually 7 is very close to 1 so it's not that far away anymore so four and five let's pick five um, let's now uh, this is the chord of five and let's now return to the chord of one now you see okay this this very basic uh, arc uh, made up of two steps and uh, turning back to the to the first one um, now we have kind of established a possible dialogue uh, between melody and chords but also between a starting point and an ending point and even here between a starting point and an ending point but I can also now play with other possibilities combinations are, are too many for example do I have to start them together? And end them together? Or can I play around with this uh, and not be so uh, orderly? Or this, of course, starts uh, becoming a bit repetitive, but um, the more combinations I experiment, to be fair, the more variety I bring in, the more I grow interest for some ideas against against others. Though this starts becoming a bit shapeless. Uh, what's missing? I I need rhythm now. Um, we can think of rhythm as the necessary impulse to move forward. If we want music to, to, to take us somewhere, I, I think it needs to have some trajectory, some impulse, some, some energy. That energy expresses itself as its most basic level with uh, a steady beat, something like this. Mm. That is the most basic rhythm possible. Mm. So rhythm is the way to give my music an order on time maybe i can start with okay this seems to be rather rather logic how about putting all together okay this uh, already has picked up some momentum and we are uh, we're moving somewhere let's find a couple more options okay uh, it's, uh, certainly it's not a, a masterpiece but um, we have arrived to the second point second arrival point uh, which is to create good music, whether improvised or written, we must produce music, meaning we must fill our time with sounds. We cannot just expect that sound by itself will uh, become music. Music is made of this time moving forward. And uh, so once sounds are picked, tried out, compared, we can then decide to keep or discard them. So. For example, in this case, there's plenty of things that, um, in our example, there are plenty of things that I would like to change. Repetition. 
competition itself is telling me uh, that I need to go somewhere else, like uh, either to a different melody or to a different chord. But you see, this necessity becomes emergent only if I repeat it, if I keep at it. So um, it seems obvious, but the main reason why often we can't finish a piece or we can't really practice improvisation maybe systematically is that and, uh, and this is coming just from my teaching experience uh, is that for a reason or another we interrupt the flow we interrupt the generation of sound um, maybe it's due to some lack of conviction maybe lack of ideas maybe some frustration comes in um, so to keep doing it is the way to to learn how to do it so let's actually now choose a particular rhythm and uh, let's try to fit it with the rest as is a bit of a latin latin feel so the, the next step is to play meaning as we were saying repetition variation correction play is playing play the game of creation uh, forget about mistakes or not just play uh, repeat in any possible uh, variation uh. So we think of creativity as resulting from pure inspiration, the, the, the muse, some idea that comes from who knows where. And that might be true, but this leads us to uh, just wait for that to happen rather than engaging in the actual process of creation, uh, which involves uh, mostly mistakes, mostly creating things wrong creativity is probably i think more related to promise problem solving than inspiration remember uh, earlier when i said uh, quoting bobby mcferrin uh, the courage necessary to play the next note well if it doesn't sound good well here's a problem to solve creatively pick another one so how come Stravinsky can compose at the table. Uh, he has, I'm guessing, experimented a lot with musical schemes, formulas and structures. He assimilated those and stored them in memory. He can afford to minimize the efforts of trying out an idea on the instrument. Why? Because he could hear them in his mind. Uh, how does a jazz musician then play without a plan, without knowing the next note. Because uh, he also has uh, assimilated schemes and structures within the style, wh wh whichever style is playing it, swing, jazz, bebop, whatever. Enough, he has assimilated those uh, schemes and structures enough so that he can predict with a certain accuracy how well a note will fit in the performance. So. The ear of a professional jazz musician is trained to the point of adjusting that evaluation in real time and allowing to put notes with a certain degree of freedom.
much uh, we can say that Stravinsky is improvising in his mind or on the paper because uh, new ideas <laughs> improvise themselves uh, after you have written down and so he writes, he corrects and finalizes so we can probably call a composition the best of many improvisations the jazz player is composing in real time either coherently adding a part to a piece that needs that part maybe through a solo or an accompaniment uh, or by inventing variations on one or more of these schemes that was previously assimilated um, I recall this uh, event that happened uh, I think uh, 10 years ago uh, I attended a master class uh, where uh, uh, a jazz clarinet player was uh, uh, teaching a young clarinet player uh, it's quite talented and uh, uh, so what happened is that uh, the, the teacher asked the student to play uh, a tune that he knew and the student did clarinet solo uh, that melody I didn't know that melody uh, and uh, and then after he heard it he asked uh, the pianist to if he knew how to accompany it the pianist was um, my jazz uh, professor uh, university and uh, mm, he didn't know the song either but after hearing it once he was able to accompany it to perfection accompany meaning finding the right chords knowing uh, knowing the changes knowing the rhythm uh, adjusting uh, you know in the style um, so that really not just impressed me <laughs> Uh, but it just blew, blew, blew me away because I only understood later on uh, that meant that um, when my professor was listening to the melody he was probably comparing that melody, that new melody to all the melodies that he knew and uh, finding already uh, forms and shapes and chords and solutions that would uh, work on it uh, investigate the style that that melody could have been uh, attached to or could have been belonged to and finding pre-fixated uh, forms that could possibly match it um, he for example told me later on that he realized even by the first few bars of the melody that that uh, tune was long 32 bars and uh, why because 32 bars is the length of uh, a tune in that style and that style uh, along with the 32 bars had distinction of um, phrases of uh, eight bars and um, so he could already create some complex um, forms in his mind and so on until after one listening he was able to uh, pretty much accompany it uh, musically and proficiently that was that was remarkable but um, we can also see how this is only possible because certain forms are already existing are already composed and uh, yeah. a talented jazz musician just uh, learns them participates in them reproduce them and sometimes invents new he composes some, composes something new, but um, uh, this is not very much different from what uh, Stravinsky does, uh, which is imagining forms and and schemes and comparing those to the ideas that uh, he came up with, finding out which one is the best to express to express it. So. Uh, to conclude, the main distinction between composing and improvising might just be one of dimensions. Um, while certain music cannot be remembered by heart, think for example of an orchestra, how can one remember you know, 30, 40 parts at once? 
and how can an orchestra remember uh, members or of the orchestra can each remember their part mm. and so music written for orchestra needs writing but other music relies on what we can carry in our own storage whether it's a core sequence or a song structure or a maybe series of effective leaks so as a teacher i encourage all my piano students to to write their creative ideas down on paper it turns an idea into something you can work on develop you can turn that into a piece of music and to composers i say instead become proficient on an instrument possibly a polyphonic one like the piano or the guitar and use it to test your ideas and try alternatives before uh, finalizing your piece Thank you everyone for listening to today's episode. Uh, today we have looked at the difference between composition and improvisation. And uh, if you haven't tried yet, I hope I have instilled in you a little bit of curiosity and motivation to, to try create your own music. Um, let me know what you think of it and if you like uh, uh, me to investigate other topics uh, for for the future i would love to hear your thoughts and um, i'll see you again here at uh, at uh, where is the music podcast bye <laughs>